So osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis are two conditions that present similarly, but do have really key differences that we need to understand in clinical practice. So if you're ready, let's explore the difference between these two. So osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis present with pain, stiffness and swelling of the joints. However, there are really important differences between them that help us when it comes to diagnosis and treatment of patients. So let's look at the differences between the two, starting with osteoarthritis. So osteoarthritis is a condition affecting joints in a more mechanical manner. That means repeated activity over time, the way that our joint moves repeatedly over a long period of time, or the way in which weight gets distributed through the joint over a long period of time. And when we think about it occurring over a long period of time, it explains why we see this condition present more commonly in the older population rather than the younger population. With osteoarthritis, the cartilage that covers our bones gets a bit thinner over time, thus offering a little less protection to those bones at the joint. We sometimes see the development of x-ray changes such as narrowing of the space between the joint or the presence of bony spurs. It commonly presents in one joint at a time. The knees and hips are where we probably see the vast majority of patients in physiotherapy, but other common places affected include the thumb joint, for example. Now, unlike other forms of arthritis, osteoarthritis does not typically cause significant stiffness in the morning. If our patient does have morning stiffness with osteoarthritis, it typically lasts for less than 30 minutes. So when we examine patients with osteoarthritis, they'll commonly explain that they have pain at an individual isolated joint, rather than pain at multiple joints, which we see with rheumatoid arthritis. At that individual joint, your patient may well present with pain on palpation. There may be some swelling, but less commonly than in rheumatoid arthritis. What will be apparent is pain when you're moving that joint, which will highlight restricted range of movement and will naturally affect your patient's activities of daily living. Now, when it comes to the NICE guidelines here in the UK, they identify three specific factors that can help a clinician diagnose osteoarthritis. Number one, the patient is over the age of 45. Number two, that patient has activity-related joint pain. And number three, their joint symptoms with stiffness last no longer than 30 minutes in the morning. So next, on to rheumatoid arthritis. So we mentioned with osteoarthritis that symptoms present because of a mechanical cause. With rheumatoid arthritis, this is a progressive and persistent inflammatory arthritis, an autoimmune condition, and therefore we find it can present more commonly in the younger age group. This condition presents more commonly in women, particularly between the ages of 30 and 50 years old. Rheumatoid arthritis also commonly has a family or hereditary link. So if patients have parents or grandparents with rheumatoid arthritis, it increases the chances of it developing in them as well. But of course, another key feature of this condition that we mentioned is that it commonly presents with wider spread multiple joint pains. This is a key feature that distinguishes it from osteoarthritis. So rheumatoid arthritis also typically presents with significant stiffness during periods of rest. And this is why we see patients reporting pain during the night and for long periods of the night, in particular, the second half of the night. Another key distinguishing feature, as we mentioned previously, is early morning stiffness. So with osteoarthritis, we highlighted that patients should present with early morning stiffness for less than 30 minutes. With rheumatoid arthritis, we can see that period extended up to 45 minutes, up to an hour, or even longer. And that early morning persistent stiffness is a really key sign. So with this in mind, as well as recognizing the key clinical signs, the crucial step for investigating rheumatoid arthritis is through blood tests to look for raised inflammatory markers. And often imaging such as x-rays to look for bony erosions or joint deformities this is all done under the care of a rheumatologist, and so if you suspect RA in your patients, order those bloods and refer the patient on to rheumatology urgently. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video and it's helped explain some of those key differences. If you have enjoyed it, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to the channel for all our best updates. Remember, we have loads more resources on our Instagram account, at Clinical Physio, and on our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.